this is going to be about uh, Meghan Markle, uh, Princess Catherine, and perhaps a little bit about Princess Charlotte. So those three things. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. A lot of you are watching and you haven't. Come on, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So there's a lot of talk about, oh gosh, Megan made Catherine cry. Oh no, Catherine made Megan cry. Oh gee, Charlotte didn't like her dress and that was the cause of the whole thing, the flower dress. So let's just throw the cards and see what we get on that. It's kind of a little petty, I think, but maybe some of you are kind of a little petty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I'm curious to know. I'm gonna have a little sip of uh, some Coca-Cola here. I'm curious to know what exactly was going on with Megan, with Catherine, and with Charlotte. So we'll ask the cards. I thought these would be great cards for this. They're um, pre-Raphaelite tarot. They have kind of a feminine feel to them. And so that seems appropriate for these three. Um, Emails. So Meghan Markle. So the story uh, first came out at the Duchess of Sussex uh, before her uh, wedding. Uh, dresses had been chosen for the flower girls and apparently Catherine had contacted uh, Meghan Markle to say Charlotte's dress doesn't fit, it's baggy, and it made Charlotte cry when she put it on. And then apparently Meghan Markle by the way, in probably her typical American forward kind of way, because I am certainly like that kind of forward, Meghan Markle apparently said, um, yeah, so there are tailors here at uh, Kensington Palace. Why don't you bring Charlotte over, uh, like the other moms who are here, and uh, we'll address the uh, dress. And apparently that was something that um, struck a, an unpleasant chord with Catherine. Um, the situation struck an unpleasant chord with Megan. And after the fact, apparently, um, both parties apologized. It, so it seems that Princess Catherine uh, sent over a note and flowers and apologized, and, and Megan also. So, and uh, it looks like, uh, I don't know if uh, Catherine cried, if Megan cried, if they both cried, if Charlotte cried, but the the point here is how does the story get out to the press that's the point it's not who made who cry it's who decided to use this uh, to feed uh, the press monster that you all love so that's what we're gonna look into all of that stuff but before we do anything as always let's take just a moment it's just a moment for meditation Okay, I feel like just uh, making a little uh, acknowledgement that maybe we can use a little protection from bad feelings um, is always useful. I mean, when you're about to do anything, why not just take a deep breath, say, you know what, help me get through this in a, in a decent, humane way. Uh, you don't even have to pray to anyone, just get that thought in your head, and that's why I like using that prayer for protection. I think it really helps. Plus. Like I said before, I do a much longer uh, meditation before, I well not much longer actually, but longer uh, meditation before I do these draws just to kind of center myself, hopefully ask for any help that might be out there to be given to me, if, if that even exists, and um, it works for me. So hopefully that little prayer protection works for you. So let's do, let's talk about the three of them 
quickly in just a few cards, maybe one card, and see how it feels. Uh, first, I want to know because it starts with Princess Charlotte. Apparently, okay, was Princess Charlotte upset about her flower girl dress? One card. Making a choice. You know, when you have to make a choice, this says to me that there's something that's uncertain about what's going on here. Now, we should acknowledge that when we're dealing with our children, they mirror uh, what we, how we react, okay? So, if you're, they, a good uh, thing to do, they say, is if your child falls down, and if you, oh no, are you okay? Oh, get up, where are you hurt? Now, if you come at them with that sort of a, an urgency, that child's gonna mirror that something's wrong. Mom or dad is upset, so I should be upset. Whereas if the child falls down, and you and you go over, uh, or you kind of, oh, okay, get up, come on over, and let's see what, how you look. Is everything okay? You know, if you take a different tone, then the child's gonna mirror that tone. Is any of that involved in this? Are those choices that we have to make as parents uh, when we're dealing with our children? And do we need to recognize how we uh, our emotions affect our kids? And then that can affect a whole larger scenario? Probably. And why am I talking about this? I didn't plan this, but that's what came to mind when I had this uh, two of swords here. Swords are truth. They're truth, okay? Justice, rules, and law. So I think in this two of swords here and I've got a sneeze I might cut this out of the video and I can tell you now I cut it out of the video anyway so this uh, two of swords yeah this is um, blind to the situation having to make a choice and uh, sometimes let's face it I'll tell you another quick story about kids and parents I have a uh, brother-in-law who uh, I happen to be shopping with uh, him uh, and uh, his wife and their child and the child was in a stroller and all of us were a little hungry but the mom wasn't quite finished shopping so the brother-in-law who was pushing the stroller says to the baby and they had a little something for the baby to eat some yogurt as a matter of fact in the baby bag he says don't you want some yogurt sweetheart I know you're hungry let me get you a little yogurt so he feeds her opens the yogurt feeds her a spoon of yogurt and has two spoons Pizza or a spoon has two spoons. So that's an example of how we take care of our children and we kind of take care of ourselves sometimes at the same time. And how we can use them as an excuse to make a point or take care of a situation. So Princess Charlotte, uh, did the dress bother here? Well, there was a choice to be made. And she made the choice, apparently, apparently she did make a choice to um, be upset about it. Uh, let's go now to Princess Catherine. Princess Catherine, did you unconsciously or consciously use the situation of an ill-fitting dress to make an issue? Okay, so, ah, this is Temperance. So this is the 14 of the Major Arcana, and Temperance is finding a balance. So that's interesting. This is an angelic figure here you can see from the wings in the back it looks just a little bit like uh, Catherine not that much really but whoever this is is a uh, temperance finding a balance and it could be that maybe uh, this was a situation where temperance uh, could have been the rule of the day but I asked the question did Princess Catherine use that uh, issue to um, deal with the situation at hand finding a balance now I'm sneezy from uh, having had that sneeze, my nose is a little wants to run. Ick. So, um, so Princess Catherine, finding a balance. Maybe she needed to find a balance to deal with that uh, ill-fitting dress. Uh, let's have one more card. But did she use the dress and her child as an excuse to make a complaint? Um, and was it too harsh? It's going to be another card after this one. Okay, so this is the Eight of Wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. Now, what do we see in this uh, this particular, in this Pre-Raphaelite uh, tarot? Uh, we see the wands coming down. They're very fruitful. We see the little uh, uh, centipedes, the little um, caterpillars crawling uh, on the um, these uh, branches. And we see that some of them have already become moths or butterflies. So this tells me that we have in this moment, we had a situation that it was rife with uh, issues coming at it, and those issues were starting to bloom and flourish. 
And uh, so for me, this is saying that temperance was called for. There were a lot of issues. And this may have been a, an opportunity for some of those issues to take flight. And then the last card as to whether Catherine used that situation um, to even a score or to make a point. And here we have, ah, this is judgment. This is judgment. Major Arcana too. So this card holds a lot of weight. We've got two Major Arcanas on either side of the disturbing um, uh, issue of a lot of issues coming to fruition at the same time. So judgment. I'm going to say that there was judgment involved in this um, uh, scuffle, okay? Um, and whenever we judge um, folks, probably we shouldn't. Probably we should step back and try to get a clear picture of it. Take a deep breath and, uh, and try not to to judge. So uh, did Catherine use this issue? Well, temperance, it looks like that's what I believe Catherine thought she was applying here, some temperance. This upset my child. What is the center of the whole thing is all the issues of the day that were going on and coming to fruition in these caterpillars turning into uh, butterflies or moths, whatever they might be. And then the uh, final uh, card in this whole thing with judgment is letting you know there was a, in the end, there was a heavy dose of judgment in this situation. So you have to make of that what you will. Uh, I have a biased brain in this matter, and so I'm not going to make that judgment. <laughs> and then the final thing I want to ask in just a couple of cards before we do a major draw is Megan, was her reaction to this over the top? Was the bride on her wedding day, was her reaction to this snarky? Why don't you come down here with the other mothers? Was it uh, judgmental? And was it unnecessarily, um, I don't want to say uncouth, but I want to say unsensitive? to someone else's issues when, of course, you've got the biggest issue going on in your life. You're getting ready to marry a prince in a, at the castle. Okay, so you've got a little stuff going on for you, too. Meghan Markle, what was going on for you? Okay, so this is the Six of Cups. Now, this is in, what strikes me first about this card is that we have all of these women involved in this Six of Cups. Everybody is loaded, cups are emotion and compassion, and everybody is carrying their full cup uh, loaded with uh, compassion and emotion at that time, all surrounding their center figure, who they're giving all the attention to, the uh, princess here. So, I don't know, this looks like all the women attending. Uh, Meghan Markle. So it looks to me like maybe her head was kind of buried in this. The other thing you can think of too is what she said is that, listen, all the other mothers are here at Kensington Palace uh, to get their dresses, their children's dresses adjusted. Why don't you bring Charlotte over? I could see that coming off two ways. All the other mothers here, uh, just bring Charlotte over or all the other mothers are here. Why don't you bring your kid over here too? So I can see that uh, getting lost in the translation. And we even kind of have what you might think of as a chapel or um, we've got the castle certainly right here. Look at that turret. And um, wow, this kind of makes me think of Kensington Palace now that I really look at it. So that's what we got there. Next card for Meghan Markle. What was your uh, part in this? And this is the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands is victory, okay? And so here we have a maiden riding in astride a horse which is a lady would be riding side saddle. This lady's riding astride a horse, so it's a little more vulgar uh, way to bring this horse into the game. It's a little more aggressive um, uh, attitude for this uh, rider to take, being presumably a lady, but she's stripped bare. She's like Lady Godiva. She's completely exposed, and look at all the issues that we have in this Six of Wands, which are actions, plans, forward movement, and, uh, and, and here, we have, uh, you could say, the groom of the horse, actually, you know, the, the person who takes care of the horse, actually kind of guiding this situation in. So far, this is saying there was a lot on Megan's plate. And the last card as to whether did she take attack in this that wasn't the best? Well, here's the Eight of Pentacles. Pentacles are value, worth. And the Eight of Pentacles is always practicing your craft until you get it 
right. She was learning how to deal with these folks. This might have been a reaction she could have had with her American friends. It wouldn't have meant too much. And, um, and uh, but she was learning still at that point how to deal with the royals. That's what comes to mind. So you may take a different take on these cards and you're certainly welcome to give me your view in the comments. Be nice. And, uh, but now let's do six cards on that whole debacle. Uh, Duchess Meghan, Princess Catherine, Princess Charlotte, the issue with the flower dress and making people cry. Who did what? Whose feelings were hurt? And what can the cards tell us about that in six cards? Okay. I'll go ahead and draw the six. Okay. One, two, three, four. These cards are beautiful. Five, and I mean the back of them. Well, the front of them are, are great too, but these are really, I should use them more often and I don't. So six cards. What can the cards tell us about the situation with the flower dress and everybody crying? Signifier. Well, we had celebrations. And again, we have uh, the maidens, huge cups in this case of compassion, compassion or emotion, and everyone's dancing around in celebration. So the signifier of this issue is that this was all around this big celebration, um, full of women. The, um, challenge to this okay is what the challenge to this is this ten of wands wands are actually plans forward movement the ten of wands is getting this big bundle of stuff moved forward okay it's not always the most flattering thing to do to try to move this thing forward but it is a handful so you've got celebrations and you've got the issue at hand is the challenge to the celebration makes sense if you've ever been in or planned or thought about getting a wedding ready and this is a royal wedding the basis of this whole thing then ah i love when the cards repeat because again like i always say that tells me that the cards know how i'm going to read that card and so they bring it back to help me make a clearer sentence out of what's going on so this eight of wands action plans forward movement is uh, all these issues the whole basis of this thing is just what i said a minute ago is that all these issues come into fruition almost at the same time and, and more are going to come behind them. In the past of this reading is this Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords is an abuse of power. But let's take a minute to look at this Five of Swords. I think this might be, even though I've had this deck for an awful long time, this might be the first time I've actually had this Five of Swords come up in a drawing. And what does this look like? Again, Five of Swords is a truth, justice, rules, law. And the Five of Swords is an abuse of power. Whose power was being abused here? Was Meghan Markle abusing her power of being the bride? Was Catherine abusing her power of being um, the heir to the throne's wife? Because I think we can drop Charlotte out of this altogether. But whatever power she was using, she's entitled to. She's a little girl. So uh, in the past of this, in other words, what is, 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 is led up to this moment that we're in right now of controversy is an abuse of power. You know, I think if you're going to say there's an abuse of power, you have to give the power to the powerful who can then abuse it. And the more powerful in this case would have been the royals, not the new person coming into the royals. They would have been the underdog. In the sky of the situation, ah, with this nine of cups, and again, it reads in perfectly with the way this has been coming to me, is that this nine of cups are sometimes called the greedy merchant, but sometimes called wishes being fulfilled, but it's all of these huge cups, almost like trophies being displayed. And in the sky here is what we're aiming for. So we're aiming for all of this emotion to come to a fruition of this big trophy to say, okay, look what we're doing. Look what's happening here. On the on Megan's side, look at what I'm doing. On the royal side, look at the celebration that we're putting together. So that's the issue in other words something when so much is in in um, invested in it it is rife with uh, potential for misunderstanding and then the final outcome and we'll see if we need to draw more cards i'm tending to think probably not right now but the final outcome of this about what about that situation with the darn flower dress and everybody crying presumably is the page of pentacles a tiny little 
offer of value of the page is the very weakest of the royal court. This is the person that brings a message to the court. Uh, you could say it's a spy in the camp, but I don't think that is appropriate right here. It just shows me that this situation represented by this page is a very small, although it's a huge consideration for a bride, especially for a non-royal, for an American, to be marrying into a royal family, that seems huge. But in the greater scheme of things, it's just a small consideration of value in this whole thing. And um, that seems um, what was going on here. But you know what? Let's get let's get four more cards. Four more cards just to see if something becomes clearer. What about the situation with Megan, Catherine, Charlotte, and the dress? What can the cards tell us in these last four cards? The signifier of that very question about this issue is what is the, okay, a big, big offer of truth, justice, rules, and law. This person is the queen or the queen uh, pro tem. Is that appropriate to say that? The queen to be. And uh, so the very signifier of this question is Catherine, okay? Catherine wanting to understand, wanting everyone to understand, she um, has some an awful lot of value here. And the environment that that's in, what is that? The environment that that's in? Ah, feeling trapped. Yeah. Okay, so now we bring Megan into the situation because she's being constricted about truth, justice, we have rules, and we have law. And so this is uh, Megan just being trapped by all of those rules, all of that stuff situated around that. We see the castle in the background. But what's true that we know about this Eight of Swords card is this person is never really trapped. The binds are loose. They can wriggle free. There's a way for them to move forward in this pool of water right here. This is a pool of compassion and emotion. And look at the swords in behind this person. Telling us it's not a time to step back. It's a time to step forward into the emotion, into the compassion. You can do it. Um, so that's the environment that this is in. The hopes and the fears for all of this then finally again is this Eight of Cups and the Eight of Cups is leaving something behind of emotional importance and moving on. Okay, Full cups, not necessarily full, but perfectly good cups, you've got to turn your back on them and, and move out. Go forward. So the hopes and the fears is that you can move away from this uh, emotional situation, what it looks like nobody really ever did. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing regarding, uh, uh, is that it was gonna be a disaster. This is the tower card. And it's interesting here, the first thing that draws my attention in this tower card is that we have a woman. Is this a woman? Yeah, it is. This is a woman falling down on her back, okay, from, from this disaster, okay. So the whole, uh, the outcome uh, indicated here, which is in fact what it was, was that it would be a disaster. And uh, it was, this whole issue around that dress was just a big emotional misunderstanding, I think. I turned the camera off and realized that I didn't address the issue of, um, what about this getting leaked? To the press this should have been a completely uh, private matter that never got out that uh, why did the press have to know about it at all and they did and uh, so let's address that i've started the cameras up again i was going to end the video but i started the cameras up again so that i could address that so what about the fact that this issue got out to the press uh, and saying that megan caused catherine to cry megan caused catherine to cry what about that can the cards tell us? You know, I'm gonna do three cards with an eye toward maybe doing three more and make it a full uh, diet across, but what about this leaking out to the press? Was this, was this an intentional leak to the press? Because it was leaked originally uh, against um, the favor of Megan towards uh, the sympathy for Catherine. So was this leaked to the press to gain the better footing for the royals, the actual royals at that time, not uh, Megan, but uh, the Catherine side. One, two, three.
We'll see if we need three more. So, was it leaked? Whoa. We have Catherine. Oh. We have the Emperor. And we have the Knight of Wands. I'm sorry to tell you, but immediately what comes to mind is this. Let me put these in the order that I drew them. Was it leaked to the press? Well, what was at issue here was Catherine's feelings. Uh, who was in charge here was uh, the monarchy, the monarchy. And in this instance, I think I mean the machinations of the monarchy, okay? Not necessarily the king, the queen, the princes, the princesses, the, the machinations behind the scenes. In other words, the courtiers, the employees wanting to um, uh, protect their or right an injustice against the person who they're working for. And this final one here, this knight of uh, wands, <clears throat> action is getting a thing. This is the, this is the time. This is the person who put that action into play, who leaked the issues. It came from the royal side. This unlikely could have been William, could have been someone uh, on that team who felt like they were the knight for that, you know, the fighter for that issue, and they weren't going to let their uh, subject be wronged. That's what I get out of this. Now we'll stop the video. There we have it. And now we know whose fault it was. What do you think? Do you agree? Or do you have a different take altogether? Let me know. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So these, this is another Los Scarabio deck. This is the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot. And I just loved uh, the, um, the way these, the artwork on these. And so... Um, uh, the work it's got a typical uh, instruction booklet you know you know it's a little hard to read it's in a couple different languages i think and um the box is not much to talk about but the cards are just really beautiful you know they uh, handle well they got like a matte finish and they go right to the edge of the cards and they're very vivid and bright and interesting to look at so i love these cards and uh, sometimes you just need a deck like this for a reason like we're going to do so a good way for everybody to kind of see what the cards look like and uh, maybe it'll uh, make you decide if you want to get uh, some tarot cards and you don't have to get just uh, some kind of cryptic thing or i mean they've got all kinds uh, that you can choose from i'm amazed at this los carabillo and caro marchetti um the different uh card it must be a, a card sweatshop they work out of there to tell you the truth so we'll get this well, going coming back tomorrow i'll be doing it all again so ciao for now <laughs>